What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. So uh, this video today is a little bit different than my normal videos. For once, I'm not out in the garage grinding, cutting, welding, getting dirty. Uh, I'm actually hanging out in the kitchen watching the kids play out in the backyard. So uh, a little bit different. But anyways, I got hit up a lot in the past week. I feel like I've gotten six or seven messages on my Instagram. As well as a, there's a guy that's been uh, leaving some comments on a few videos asking questions about about track bars and four links and and i've been asked a lot lately about this about like you know do you need a track bar and a four link um how, how do you get a four link to track correctly without one and, and and all these things and i thought i'd do this video to kind of break down uh you know how you know a little bit of how a track bar works but also you know how to get a four link set up correctly to where you won't need it so let's get to a whiteboard. I'm going to go ahead and break this down and we're going to go through it and uh, hopefully it'll make all, all the sense of the world to you guys by the time this video is done. All right, so I got a little illustration here. Uh, I just want to touch on what, what's a track bar or pan hard bar. Well, like we got our tires, our axle. These are our frame rails. We got our frame mount, our track bar, and then we got our axle mount. Don't mind this. This, this line represents the arc of our track bar. Now, excuse my drawing, I'm not an artist, I am much better welder, but this arc represents the swing of the axle. So a pan hard bar or a track bar doesn't fight side to side movement, it controls it. Based off of the length, you know, the starting point, as the axle droops, it will travel over okay that's why depending on you know the lift kit you get you might get um, a bracket that will be longer so that way the track bar will be back in its factory location or they'll send you a long uh, adjustable one that you can lengthen to reach because at ride height you want the axle centered so this bar has to reach the mount so that's why they, they have, you know, the brackets for the, for the track bars with lift kits. So they have adjustable track bars. Now, that's to get your starting point centered. And then, like I said, it's going to control your side-to-side -side movement based off the angle and length. That's going to dictate how much your axle moves side-to-side. -side. Now, we're going to go over how to tell with like so we're going to go mainly over four links four links are typically what everybody's putting on their their rigs um now there is a scenario where you have to have a track bar with a four link most of the setups do not require it. you're not supposed to need them you don't want them on there and let's let's kind of go through that i'm not going to get into three links because they, they, they inherently need a, a track bar, but there is a way to do it where you don't need a track bar with a three link. I just don't believe in it. It's, it's, it's kind of controversial. There's been a lot of talk over the years on the internet on whether or not it'll work. Some people saying they've done it. I mean, hey, if you've done it, I'd love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments down below. Um, I've never done it. I've never seen it. I just can't wrap my head around how it would be strong enough for, for like rock crawling. Um, I could be wrong, uh, and if I am, please shoot it down in the comments. I really would love to hear about it because it's something I have been curious about over the years. I just, like I said, can't wrap my head around it being strong enough for me. So I'm not going to go over three links without a track bar. In my opinion, if you got a three link, you're throwing a track bar on it. So now, getting into the four links, we've got our first setup, which is going to be a parallel. We got our frame rails our axle, and then our links just go straight from the frame rail to the axle in a straight line, typically above each other, but it doesn't really matter how, like, because what you're doing is you're fighting um, axle wrap. So these are actually above each other, but they are straight. That's the biggest point to this. With this setup, you have to have a track bar. No matter what, there is, there's no way around it. Parallel floor link, have to have a track bar. Then you get into your semi-triangulated four link. And this is typically what people will be running uh, when, they, when they build their setups, be, just because of fitment. Tr semi-triangulated four links are, are easier to package 
in factory chassis just because you don't have as much hurdles to overcome when it comes to packaging. Um, now getting into your dual triangulated four links. This is, this is what a lot of people consider to be like the ultimate setup. This is what, you know, if I could fit it, I always run it. It's, it is the better setup. It's super strong. It's very consistent through travel there. You have a lot of control through the setup. It, it is, in my opinion, the ultimate setup. The problem is, is packaging. You just can't always get it to fit. You know, you got to build a cross member that comes across from frame rail to frame rail. Then you've got your link mounts. They go from your center line out to the axle. And then you've got your other links that are going to go from the frame to the center. Now, again, best setup, absolutely no need for a track bar. Now, going back to the semi, the semi-triangulated four link or like, let's just say you have the uppers triangulated, that's semi, or if you just have the lowers, that's what we're talking about here. This should not need a track bar and it can't run one. So what am I talking about? Well, you need to have 40 degrees, right? Put it here, 40 degrees minimum triangulation. That's how it's always explained, and it it's kind of confusing, right? Like, what, where, where is that? Where is the forty degrees? Now, I'm gonna go and say it like this: You need forty degrees total. Now, again, with that being said, most people interpret that as right here. Okay, here's my triangulated links. I need forty degrees right there. Yes, yeah, you're good. You got forty degrees. Move on. That, that 40 degree minimum will keep the axle centered for the most, like it's gonna be pretty strong. The more, the better though, 100%. If you get more than that, you, you're way better off. But that's your minimum to keep the axle centered. Now, let, let's, let's draw this out here. Let's, let's first off, let's talk about how you could find that and what if you don't have it. So we'll, we'll do our frame rails. We have our lower links coming off the frame straight. They are perfectly in line with the frame. That means that these are at zero degrees. Okay, they are going to the axle and they are at zero degrees. Now we have our upper uppers. Our upper links are gonna go down to the center. Now, how do I figure out how much triangulation is here? Now, there's a couple ways you could do this. I've seen people uh, do it with like a, there's, there's little tools you could get. They're like a little angle finder. And you, if you could fit it in there and get an accurate measurement, then that would be good. That's one way to do it. Um, I like to get a little bit more intricate with it. I like having real good numbers. Um, so I do a lot of math. Uh, the way I do it is I got, I use some, uh, construction calculators that do, uh, that, that do, um, triangles. And what I do is we know the center line, at least we should because we're centering the axle under, underneath the chassis. So we take that center line, we get a measurement from the mount on the frame to the center line. We punch that into the calculator. We know our link length. We punch that into the calculator. Now this is gonna be 90 degrees right here. So the calculator will tell us what this line is. It's really irrelevant, but it will tell us what that is and in turn, also kick out what our degree is. So let's say this comes out 15 degrees. Now, it because we know that link is at 15 degrees and the axle is perfectly centered and everything's mirrored on the other side, that means this one is at 15 degrees. Now, that's a problem because we have 30 degrees of total triangulation. Zero zero, 15, 15, 30. That's what we have in total now because of it. That's not enough. This is actually something that happened to a buddy of mine years ago. He ended up around roughly 30 degrees and he, he did this on his TJ. He just, you know, he threw his four link together in the back. He's like, Hey, uh, the uppers are triangulated. So I, you know, I'm good. Got everything built driving down the road. And he's like, man, it, it, this thing feels like it, it floats like the back just feels like it's sliding off the axle. Like it's really weird feeling. And that turned out to be what it was. He didn't have 
enough triangulation. So we get back to what do we need? 40 degrees minimum total, right? So the solution is right here. If we can outboard our lower link or upper, whatever, we just move our other link out. Now let's say we get that out to 10 degrees. Do the same thing over here. And now we're at 10 degrees. We've got 10, 20 plus 30. Now we are at 50 degrees of total. Now we're good. It's really important to remember that because it's really easy, especially on something like my YJ that I'm building. They're narrow frame widths. And if you're doing a stretch like I did, like it's pretty easy to lose triangulation here. The longer these lengths are, the less triangulation you're going to have here uh, the, because of how narrow that frame rail is. So you got to keep an eye on that and do your math, whether it's using the tool to find the degree or you're doing the math to find the degree, you got to make sure to kind of pay attention to that. The more triangulation you get, the better, but definitely keep an eye on those. So hopefully this helps some of you guys kind of get an understanding for this. Um, because, you know, if you, you mess up and you end up with that 30, you know, if you're still at zero out here, you know, you're, you're kind of in a pretty bad predicament because you cannot throw a track bar on that. You know, it's, it, it's inherently going to bind. You have, you're going to have some triangulation, like where it's going to fight your side to side movement here, but what's a track bar do, right? It controls your side to side movement. So now as your axle droops and the track bar wants to drag your axle to the side, you're going to have your links fighting that. And now you're going to have the, the axle droop and all of a sudden start binding and your suspension's not going to move. So it's really important when you're building one of these setups to pay attention to these numbers. And if you're finding that you're not getting that 40 degree minimum, start looking to your outer links or you're going to have to shorten your link length so you could get some of that triangulation back. Hopefully you guys will like and subscribe. If you got any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them down below. I really appreciate you guys as always. Till next time, take it easy.